yes so we'll continue so we were at the most um, uh, repeated scripture in the book of acts acts chapter 1 and verse 9 and we saw how um, uh, we too must depend on the baptism in the holy spirit um, for us to see um, uh, god's purposes unfold you no know, through our lives and for us to fulfill those purposes now continuing from there uh, what happened after that you know we we uh, notice that the lord jesus actually ascended and he was taken up into heaven and the believers the disciples uh, and i i would use the term okay apostles and other disciples you know they all uh, looked at jesus being taken up into heaven okay that's what the next passage there say, says uh, and while they were watching the lord jesus being taken up uh, you know there is also a uh, two men uh, it says who stood in white apparel which seems like the description of uh, angelic beings uh, they stood and they spoke to these people and said men of galilee why do you stand gazing up into heaven this same jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven so it's beautiful because uh, this is again a prophetic word uh, which tells us that the lord jesus is going to return now the lord jesus was taken up in the sight of everyone so again when we talk about the ascension of of uh, jesus uh, remember we we said that when he was here uh, on the earth for 40 days after his resurrection there are many who actually saw him right M many who uh, saw the uh, the some of the miracles and the things that he did as well so it's not just the bible that records it but there are other historical accounts in the same way when something happens in the sight of witnesses you know it's very difficult to cover that up it's very difficult to say that hey it didn't happen so the bible very clearly points out that the lord jesus ascended and that was seen by a lot of people now like uh, uh, any set of uh, um, followers earnest followers these disciples probably felt sad that their leader was being taken away from them so uh, it, it, it's very obvious you know that they they stood they saw that a cloud received him up okay uh, and they watched it says they watched now they would have watched in sadness they would have watched in um uh, fear how are we going to continue uh, the work of god on the earth you know there could have been so many questions in their minds again you know god was faithful enough to direct them to the right perspective and he says you don't worry i mean you don't have to uh, uh, stand and watch the ascending christ uh, being taken up because he is going to come back but you have work to do right so why don't you uh, go ahead and why don't you do what god has called you to do so that was the um, intention behind giving them this message and saying you know why do you stand gazing up into heaven okay please go on what did jesus tell you to do and they would have immediately said oh he asked us to go to jerusalem and wait there for the promise of the father so uh, they uh, were faithful to do that now from verse 12 you notice that they returned uh, to jerusalem from the mount olive so where from where did jesus at, uh, ascend into heaven from mount olive okay and it clearly shows that you know it's a sabbath journey away so those days they measured the distance by the time that it took to travel okay so a sabbath distance away they go from mount olive to jerusalem and there they do what uh, jesus told them to do and now they have found a place it's called the upper room uh, was the upper room really uh, um, you know the kind of an upper room well what we know is it was probably a uh, it it was probably a room in the uh, like the temple area you know somewhere somewhere there it was a room over there and it was called upper room for whatever reason but it was a large enough space and that was the place where these 
apostles and the believers was were um, uh, you know waiting they were staying there and uh, you notice that uh, these people they were gathered together okay so who are who are the uh, apostles who are remaining now there's peter there's james there's john and andrew philip thomas ba bartholomew matthew james the son of alphaeus and simon the zealot and judas the son of james there is one person missing here that is judas iscariot you okay, know we know that uh, he betrayed christ and uh, he also died a uh, uh, very um, like a uh, you know a very gruesome death okay um so these 11 are here and they all continued it says with one accord so one accord in prayer simply means to have a, a common um cause that you are holding on to and you are praying so i'm sure at this point you know they would have been uh, praying for the holy spirit baptism what uh, jesus told them would happen so they would have been mainly praying for that but praying about a lot of other things uh, and uh, they were making supplication right supplication is requesting god requesting god um, and bringing uh, their petitions before the lord earnestly you know asking god seeking god uh, so it was not just these 11 people but you notice here there were uh, the women mary the mother of jesus and uh, the brothers okay they were all present over there so that's why i told you there were the apostles and there were also the other followers so among the other followers you notice here you have the very family of jesus uh, okay and um, you know we know right that it's it's not easy sometimes for our own family members to follow um, us and our uh, leading but obviously they had understood that the man who lived with them was more than just a human being that he truly is the messiah so they also are disciples now if you recall in the gospels there were times when um, you know the brothers of jesus they were not cooperative you know they never thought much about jesus all that happened but now what ha what happened to them they have become followers of the lord jesus christ and as they are staying in the upper room you read that peter stood up okay peter stood up in the midst of the disciples uh, now peter had this uh, uh, personality where he wanted to okay uh, just coming to the question here on the chat sorry for the for the distraction there manu says ma'am how to know that we we are filled with the baptism in the holy spirit okay we'll come to that uh, later manu because you know there's a lot that we need to talk about it uh, in the chapters that follow so coming back to what i was saying so peter stood up and he had this personality um where he is too quick to speak okay you would agree with me he has done this in the past but here uh, in line with that same personality you see that he is demonstrating leadership okay nobody told him to speak nobody told him to stand but you know that leadership uh, uh, the grace that god has given him that begins to emerge so he just stands up okay in the midst of the disciples and <coughs> how many were there there was it says about 120 people who had gathered and he begins to speak to them and uh, you know he says that uh, uh, scripture had to be fulfilled uh, which the holy spirit had spoken uh, about judas right and uh, you know he says that look you know what judas did and how he died so he goes ahead to explain that how he fell in the field and even his intestines gushed out uh, you know and, and so basically he talks about that and uh, he uh, peter has this understanding see till now they've lived with jesus and they realize that a lot of what happened is the fulfillment of the prophetic word from the scriptures that they know so peter is faithful to that and he remembers that hey the book of psalms talks about uh, uh, you know a person who experiences uh, loss and who experiences um, uh, the removal from uh, you know god's covenant uh, so so he quotes some of these scriptures uh, he says um, 
Yeah, you know, he quotes says, says, "Let his dwelling place be desolate, and let no one live in it, and let another take his office." So this, these are the scriptures which are spoken uh, in the book of Psalms, and he connects it to the life of Judas. Uh, he knows that one part has already taken place, which is Judas dying, but the other part. let another take his office you know peter realizes that that has not yet happened and uh, you know he wants to see the fulfillment of scripture and i'm sure the holy spirit would have guided him uh, and, and told him that he, this is the right time to make sure that another takes his place so peter uh, leads the uh, community there to choose that missing person that another who should take the place so what what exactly happens uh you know he says that there are two people whom he proposes uh one is joseph called barsabas and the other one is uh, uh you know justice uh and he's also called as matthias so uh, he says that these two people are there and you know these people are not new to the teachings of jesus they are not uh you know some some fresh believers or or things like that no but they have heard the lord jesus uh, you know they have moved in and out you know and uh, from different places where jesus was ministering so they have observed and they have walked with the lord jesus seems like these 120 people are those committed followers right and among those committed followers uh, he again points out that there are two people who are very very committed okay and uh, maybe we can depend on them to continue the legacy which uh, judas never fulfilled so he uh, suggests two names right he suggests two names and then he wants the uh, group to respond to that so what exactly do they do uh, in order to select the right person after judas so we go on to see there you know they he wants the people to actually pray all right so they are depending on the direction of the holy spirit to replace judas so they prayed and said lord you know the hearts of all show which of these two you have chosen to take part in this ministry and apostleship from which judas by transgression fell that he might go to his own place so how do they select the 12th person among the apostles through the leading of the holy spirit right because many of us remember the second part they cast lots they picked one they got the name of uh, you know matthias or matthias and uh, he was numbered among the apostles but is it simply because they picked the lot see in the old testament they had these practices okay if you recall uh, the uh, picking of lots because they practiced it they did not have the indwelling holy spirit till that time right so they would depend on all these things and uh, you know god would guide them in that manner but once people were born again and we know i think it was john chapter 20 where we read that the disciples were born again jesus comes and he breathes on them receive ye the holy spirit right so the indwelling holy spirit presence is with the disciples now they are born again uh, and so they actually don't have to pick chicks and things like that but because it's part of their tradition they continue it uh, but their faith is in god even though they are using that same old practice of the old testament they are praying and they are asking the holy spirit to guide them and obviously you know the holy spirit guided them and the lot fell on uh, matthias and he became the uh, missing apostle okay so till that we notice uh, the preparation that the disciples had before the outpouring of the holy spirit and uh, you know they were still praying they were still waiting for that promise of the father that jesus had talked about so now we are going to come to acts chapter 2 and we will see uh, you know how this outpouring actually takes place so it's a rather lo long passage are you all okay if i just explain without us reading the entire passage or uh, will it be good to just read it today
okay we can go ahead yeah you can keep the uh, you can keep the bible open in front of you or oh, reading is more clear some people are saying mm. okay maybe just acts chapter 2 shall we shall we read it okay uh, because uh, yeah i think it'll be good so there are quite a few Oh wow there's like 40 47 verses there okay uh, how about i just try to narrate it and wherever uh, required i will read the verses is that okay i'll be little slow okay fine 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 okay let's continue then okay so now we know these people were waiting they were praying they selected the um, next apostle among them and when the day of pentecost had fully come remember i told you the next festival is pentecost and finally you know that day is here now did jesus tell them in how many days they are going to receive the holy spirit no exactly he didn't point out to uh, you know a, a certain number of days but their earnestness you know their hunger is what mattered and these people it says they were in one accord in one place so the upper room you know that place initially they prayed for uh, 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 for the selection of uh, matthias but even before that we read right their posture is prayer their posture is prayer their posture is you know uh, a supplication it's just coming before the lord waiting on the lord so they had the right posture to receive the promise of god now jesus has already spoken he's already told it's going to happen it's just a matter of time but here the people are waiting and it says in one accord right so one accord what what is the meaning of that word uh, one accord i will give you the greek uh, meaning for that uh, it is from the greek word homo to man don quite a, a you know a lo- long word there but it says uh, unanimous unanimously meaning having like a just one heart one thought about matters so unanimous they they're all hungering thirsting for the same thing it's like that okay and they were waiting and look at the beauty of this there is a preparation to receive the outpouring of the holy spirit and that is the right you know right heart condition and right um uh, position where they are hungering after god while there is that preparation we still read it says and suddenly okay because <coughs> in a way it was not suddenly they knew that is going to happen but they just didn't know the exact time so while they are waiting god is faithful right that exact time only he knew and suddenly how did it happen it says there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and one sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the holy spirit okay so it's happening in a very dramatic way on the first day when the holy spirit was poured out on the believers here on the earth okay so they hear the sound of a, a rushing mighty wind some of us you know we stay in coastal areas we have uh, uh storms you know sea uh, coastal storms and rains and you know how how uh, it it can be right it can be quite scary loud rushing mighty wind okay we can relate to things like that so in a supernatural sense uh, uh, you know these things started happening and obviously whatever we are talking about is real like even in the natural realm uh, this has happened so they heard the sound they felt the you know like uh, like a rushing mighty wind and the 
whole house was filled with with this um you know change in environment okay and tongues of fire came and sat on each one of them and for the first time the bible records that they were filled with the holy spirit okay you don't read that earlier you never really read that that they were filled on jesus breathed on them and they received the holy spirit that's what uh, we see but they were actually filled with the holy spirit okay then what what happens once they were filled with the holy spirit they began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance okay uh, so manu the question which you asked how do we know if we are filled with the holy spirit how do we know um, you know another term uh, we we could say that this is the baptism in the holy spirit because remember jesus said john baptized uh, you with water but um, you will receive the power of the you will receive the baptism in the holy spirit so though the bible describes this as filled with the holy spirit this is also the baptism baptism means being dipped baptismo again from the greek word it is like you know when you drink a um, cup of coffee with a biscuit or something what do you generally do you know we have this habit of just dunking it in the tea and then taking a bite of it so what is that dunking into the liquid there that is baptismo immerse okay so baptism is being immersed into something so it's the same thing you know baptism in the holy spirit where you are being put into the holy spirit and the holy spirit is filling you up right so it's the same experience and what happens as a result of that we notice here that they speak in tongues now as we go forward in the book of acts you know wherever we come across accounts of uh, um, people being baptized in the holy spirit people uh, being filled with the holy spirit you will see this common thread in in many places you know it says that they spoke in tongues they spoke in tongues they spoke in tongues so manu you can take this as one of the common things that happens when people are filled with the holy spirit you know you would see them speak in other tongues now this tongues uh, it's not a known or a learned language that's why it says here as the spirit gave them utterance so the language comes from the holy spirit this is not something we can learn but the holy spirit gives this language okay and it happened for the first time uh, on the day of pentecost okay now when this happened you have to imagine with me okay there is this place called the upper room uh, you know uh, sort of close to the temple and uh, you know people are staying close the, to the temple because they have come to celebrate uh, the pentecost festival and there are people from all other many different regions in jerusalem now in a dramatic way when there is this rushing mighty wind sound and then suddenly 120 people are speaking in some strange language what will happen it will be so noisy isn't it so others around them took notice of this we are told that uh, they were dwelling so a lot of people were staying in jerusalem at that time they were jews they were devout men okay, they had come from every nation uh, under heaven and when this sound occurred that's how we know that it was a um, it was a natural sound as well you know it's not like something spiritual they heard it in their spirit and that's it no but obviously it was a loud natural sound because others responded to what was going on so when others heard this sound and speaking in new new languages the multitude came together and they were confused okay um, why were they confused because we are told that they heard uh, the the they heard their own languages now remember i told you uh, people were speaking in all kinds of languages and there were men present fr from different parts of the uh, you know it says many nations so different parts of the world now they all heard their own languages no wonder they were so amazed okay now let's read on let's read on okay so what did they remark as 
okay uh, and and it says that they were confused everyone heard them speak in his own language then they were all amazed and marveled saying to one another look are not all these who speak galileans and how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born okay so there were parthians and medes and elamites those dwelling in mesopotamia judea and cappadocia pontus and asia uh, phrygia and pamphylia egypt and the parts of libya adjoining cyrene visitors from rome both jews and proselytes cretans and arabs we hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of god so they were all amazed and perplexed saying to one another whatever could this mean others mocking said they are full of new wine so you know this passage is extremely uh, uh, like you know you have two reactions you have one group uh, who are amazed they are perplexed they hear uh, you know these galileans apparently the galileans were not good speakers okay they were not uh, mm, you know very well educated people with great exposure and eloquence they were not people of that kind they were you know some uh, i mean they had their jobs uh, and they would just go about you know their regular duties so they were not like the learned people and that is why a lot of others who heard them speak in their own languages they were amazed they said are they are galileans how can they even know our language and they are speaking of the words of god so you know there's something confusing taking place before the eyes of um, people from different nations okay uh, and and that is what is unfolding right now i'll just quickly uh, show my screen here i'll share it with you <coughs> excuse me oh okay i'm not sure if you would let me share my okay yes everyone uh let me just take you to let's okay are you able to see everybody Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, um, wonderful. Okay, time. okay. So remember, I told you they are all in Jerusalem, and people have come from different parts of the different nations. And in Jerusalem, in Jerusalem, okay, uh, people from all these parts. I've listed it out for you. You just notice all the names. So it's actually like fifteen. uh different regions that are mentioned okay they could hear from among the 120 people 15 diff at least 15 different languages so obviously this has to be the supernatural work of god and why were all these people present in jerusalem we read that they were god fearing men and women okay so they had come to worship god and god is helping them see this marvelous uh, uh you know milestone in the life of the church which is the baptism in the holy spirit and he doesn't do it in a quiet way you know when uh, sometimes we have uh, these huge events something something amazing like you have the uh, uh, you launch uh, a, a spacecraft or something like that and a huge celebration is held to do it it's somewhat like that you know god wanted this this time when he pours out the holy spirit to be a very marked notable time in history and uh, you know it came in with a rushing mighty wind and the people began to be filled with the holy spirit in that upper room and started speaking in tongues they themselves did not know that they were speaking earthly languages at least 15 different languages okay and uh, when something like this happened through the galileans who are not eloquent people 
the others realized that this is marvelous you know it has to be a work of god so a lot of these devout jews at that point they realized that god is at work but notice in that same passage you know i also read and i i i told us that some people said that these men they seem to be drunk right uh, they they are not in their own senses so what do we realize with this you see when god works right when god works it may not always be easy to receive what god is doing so what is the reaction that people have for the work of the holy spirit you have one group which says that this is god you know uh, and and something is amazing about what's going on but you have another group which tries to rationalize it and give an excuse and say how can it be god you know and it looks like these people are drunk you know why are they behaving uh, without any decorum without any decency speaking out aloud and you know uh, just causing so much of chaos don't they know how to uh, stay disciplined while the festival is going on so you know you have that other category that is uh, not receptive of the work of god and in fact they are mocking of what the holy spirit is actually doing right so to the work of the spirit we could see both these reactions and we see it even till today some people accept it but a lot of people want to mock it okay so that was uh, the same thing that happened on that first day when the uh, believers began to speak in other tongues so when they were told that you know you all must be drunk what happens in verse 14 we notice peter he stood up with the 11 okay remember i told you there was a grace for leadership on peter's life and you see him coming into that position right and uh, it's happening as the events are unfolding you know it's not like jesus i don't know whether jesus sat him down and said okay peter when i'm gone you have to take the lead i'm not sure if jesus ever did that but the grace of god upon his life right he is beginning to move in that direction of that grace and he is taking uh, uh, his his position so peter he stands up and he it says he raised his voice and he said to them so he's responding to the comments which are coming and he's uh, telling them men of judea and all who dwell in jerusalem let this be known to you and heed my words for these are not drunk as you suppose since it is only the third hour of the day so he begins by providing some explanation to clear their confusion and he says you know how can you call us drunk because according to that timing right the jewish timing it was only 9 am in the morning so he says do people drink in the morning you know generally that doesn't happen right uh, people get drunk at the end of the day so he's he's trying to uh, provide some clarity to uh, the onlookers so he he starts by refuting their accusation and he says no we are not drunk okay now this is what is actually happening and you see peter is quite uh, <coughs> sorry keen on the fulfillment of god's promise promises on the fulfillment of uh, god's word on the fulfillment of uh, the prophetic word even earlier he said okay judas died but the scriptures say that somebody has to replace him let's go ahead and pick that person in the same way in acts chapter 2 he goes back to the prophecy of joel okay and he uh, speaks that prophecy of joel now you must realize you know these are galileans they are not into uh, all these intellectual speeches and all that but how is it that peter is speaking like this boldly in front of people from other nations you shall be my witnesses remember Jesus said that when the holy spirit has come upon you you shall be my witnesses you will be bold to stand up for me you will be determined to stand up for me so it's happening in split seconds peter is baptized in the holy spirit i'm sure he spoke in tongues too and now that others are saying you all are drunk he says hey we are not drunk let me tell you what is going on and so he speaks of the prophecy of joel 
and he and he and he says it out he says uh, and joel said in the and it shall come to pass in the last day says god that i will pour out my of my spirit on all flesh your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your young men shall see visions your old men shall dream dreams and on my men servants and on my maid servants i will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy i will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor of smoke the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the lord and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the lord shall be saved so remember we said the devout men from every nation uh, have gathered in jerusalem so peter knew that these jews know the scriptures okay jews generally they were very well versed in scripture so he was reminding them of this portion that joel spoke of and said god promised us didn't he that there will come a day when he said he will pour out his spirit on all flesh now see the difference here till uh the day of pentecost the spirit of god was not poured out on all flesh okay in the old testament we have accounts of the spirit coming upon the prophets and that too didn't stay with the prophets all the time would come when they minister and leave right you uh, see the spirit the anointing coming upon uh, the kings you see the anointing coming upon the priests so you only find those who were uh, anointed for ministry receiving the holy spirit it was not for all flesh that is why uh, people were uh, you know flocking they were they wanted to meet these so called anointed prophets anointed priests because they knew that the spirit of god was upon them but from now the day of pentecost something very beautiful is taking place and joel joel had already spoken of this and peter is telling them look don't you remember god already said he is going to pour out his spirit on all flesh okay it's like good news great news that god all of the spirit of god and as a result of the outpouring of the spirit what can be expected now joel gave some some pointers and he said uh, you would find that uh, both men and women they will prophesy there will be visions involved there will be dreams involved right uh, and in this manner there will be signs there will be wonders uh, and so many things will happen and all this will take place the outpouring of the holy spirit will take place you know well before the return of christ so now that he has explained that you know there is such a word uh, uh, given by god to his people you know he continues in verse 22 and he says men of israel hear these words jesus of nazareth a man attested by god to you by miracles wonders and signs which god did through him in your midst as you yourselves also know him being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of god you have taken by lawless hands have crucified and put to death whom god raised up having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be held by it so you know he has explained that uh, this promise is there uh, in the word of god and that it is unfolding before their eyes and then he moves on to talking about the lord jesus christ now uh, i i think i um, missed one scripture which i wanted to highlight this is again if you just go back a little bit uh, verse number 16 okay verse number 16 so before going through the prophecy of joel <clears throat> peter uses the sentence he says but this is what was spoken by the prophet joel so you know when the men stood amazed uh and some people were questioning whether uh, all these believers were drunk peter starts by saying no we are not drunk but what you see is what joel has spoken so that verse 16 is very important because peter is in some uh, translations it says this is that 
okay this is that so he's providing them an explanation and i'm sure any devout jew at that time would have understood that oh okay this is the outpouring on every human being by the spirit of god right so he clarifies he clears their their doubts and he uh, assures them that finally the prophecy of joel is fulfilled now a couple of things uh, you know that would come up is joel said there'll be prophecy dreams visions uh, there'll be wonders signs but none of that happened in the upper room okay what happened in the upper room it was just tongues okay and um, we won't go into the depths of it but i encourage you to go and read uh, one of the apc publications from our books section uh, so you can go to uh, apcwo.org forward slash uh, forward slash uh, i think it's books right so you can go there and uh, you you can download the book on uh, the gifts of the holy spirit and there is an elaborate um, explanation about tongues and the types of tongues you find that there is a particular type of tongues which is seen here in acts chapter 2 and what is that tongues this is the tongues that we call as a sign to the unbeliever okay what is this sign when we begin to speak in tongues we are actually talking an earthly language okay so it's a kind of tongue not every time uh, would we speak in an earthly language no because we have acts of uh, one first corinthians 14 which tells us that we speak uh, heavenly languages right heavenly languages of angels languages of angels so there are other languages as well that we speak when we speak in tongues but what happened in acts chapter 2 the people spoke in earthly languages okay so there is a different manifestation till till that time nobody knew about tongues but the manifestation of the spirit is very different right in acts chapter 2 but what is joel speaking in uh, his prophecy joel is talking about other manifestations but you know it takes the holy spirit for peter to say in verse 16 this is that okay so the manifestation is somewhat different from what was expected but when the outpouring in the holy spirit happened god gave peter the discernment to say that this occurrence is actually what the prophet joel prophesied in joel chapter 2 okay so he provides this explanation to the onlookers and i already showed you the map people from uh, at least 15 different nations who are observing what is going on and then you know he makes this grand speech about the lord jesus so a, a lot of people call this like the first sermon of peter okay wonderful sermon but what is the theme of peter's sermon the theme of peter's sermon is jesus of nazareth okay now you realize it needs a lot of courage to talk about jesus at this point why because they are only like 50 days after the passover right roughly 2 uh, months after all this uh, chaos and, and disturbance took place uh, in jerusalem about the crucifixion of jesus now there must be a lot of people opposing jesus and uh, his teachings and uh, at the time when peter was asked are you one of his disciples he denies because he was so cowardly but now after the resurrection of christ after the uh, you know baptism in the holy spirit this is a bold peter uh, in a crucial time you know he is able to stand up and he is able to preach jesus christ no matter what happens to him and he says jesus of nazareth and he is not just an ordinary man you know he is giving uh, the people proof that he is god because he is saying he was a man yes but he was attested by god how because of the supernatural things that took place in his life miracles wonders signs which god did through him so the holy spirit did these things through the life of jesus but then you know he goes on to accuse the uh, jewish people and he says but you know though uh, the lord jesus was sent 
for a purpose and by the foreknowledge of god you know you have taken by your lawless hands imagine how bold he should be to speak like this to the jews and at this point not even 2 months after the crucifixion of jesus and he says you have crucified okay he puts the blame squarely on the on the jewish people and he says you put him to death but he says god raised him up so uh, he is giving witness to what he is giving witness to the resurrection of the lord jesus again this is very it could have been very problematic for peter but what has happened to him now he is bold he is filled with the holy spirit he says whom god raised up having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be held by it uh, so you know you notice here the boldness of peter uh, which is seen like immediately immediately after the outpouring of the holy spirit so what i'm going to do right now is i'm just going to uh, pause right here we will uh, answer some of the questions here in the chat right and uh, it'll be good if you could go through acts chapter 2 and come back i'll do a quick recap and uh, cover it in the next class and continue on with the following chapter uh, so yes there is a question which says only one symbol to recognize the holy spirit so uh, you see manu in this passage there are two things you know a rushing mighty wind that symbolizes the holy spirit tongues of fire that symbolizes the holy spirit but you know it doesn't stop there if you look at john chapter 7 there is the rivers uh, you know rivers will flow out of your belly it's a, so the rivers it's a symbol uh so in that way there are a lot of symbols for the holy spirit in scripture but you find only two of them at least we saw two of them today okay uh, and uh, manu says uh, verses 13 and 14 uh, she did not understand so let me just quickly look at verses 13 and 14 yeah others are mocking see uh, basically uh, what happens is uh, people are against what they see some people are for it they say oh galileans are speaking our languages and glorifying god amazing good but there are others who put them down that is mocking okay uh, and so later on like from verse 14 peter starts giving them an explanation and saying how can you say that we are drunk it's just 9 in the morning okay and i hope that answers your question uh, kiran's question here how did peter yes, know ma about thank you ma'am sure sure no problem uh, and uh, joel's prophecy Uh, i told you uh, kiran that the jews were well aware of the scriptures so that's why even when peter is talking the way he would have spoken is like don't you know you all must already know you know that kind of a thing so the jews already knew uh, a lot of scripture is that okay okay wonderful wonderful okay Yes, yes, uh, Kiran. Peter was a Jew, so we know that the ministry of Jesus, while he was alive, was only to the Jews. Remember, he says that uh, to a Syrophoenician woman who comes asking for uh, healing for her son, he says that I have only come for uh, the children of Israel. I have only come for the Jews. So only after he died. uh you will notice in the book of acts the gospel will go from the jews to the gentiles to the nations of the earth okay so yes the apostles here they are jews mm good questions very very good questions all right so um you know i'm sure you have a lot of food for thought uh please do go back and read uh we will come back and we will pick up from where we stopped uh, i just try to be you know a little faster so that uh, we could cover up our portions as well but if you have questions please uh, you know uh, bring it along next class we will discuss or post it on the stream page um and uh, you know i want to make sure that all your doubts are uh, clarified right uh, so yes please make sure you ask your questions all right at this point let's uh, wrap up uh, and uh, maybe one of us can have a word of prayer and we close this class
Okay, uh, Dev, could you please pray? Okay, I'm not sure if he's able to hear me. Okay, I don't want to take too much of your time, class. Mm. Okay, let me just pray then and we can close. Um, Heavenly Father, we thank and worship you, Lord, for the truth of your word. Father, even as we read about how you have fulfilled your promise in the lives of your children, Lord, we are uh, encouraged, Lord, to see the fulfillment of your word and your promise in our lives, in our generation today. And Lord, we pray that this uh, subject will not just be uh, historical, but Lord, that the power of God will be released into us and through us. Lord, I speak your blessing uh, over every uh, student, Lord, and I pray that by the Holy Spirit, Lord, you will uh, give them the revelation that they need, Lord, to live victoriously for the glory of your name. Thank you once again for this time in your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you, class. Please, uh, you know, carry on. Feel free to log off. All the best for your next class. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Bye. Bye for now. God bless you.